All right, for demo today, we have the super awesome 1969 to very early 1970 in terms of the features, Gibson Les Paul Deluxe Gold Top. Mostly clean in terms of the demo, but let's hear what it sounds like first in the uh, neck position. <laughs> cranking it up uh, but let's just do a quick rundown on this guitar so it's a late 69 early 70 gold top why do I say that now the reason you should have the question of course is typically we date a guitar based on the last dated component in it in this case it would be early 1970 the pots date to the 10th week of the first month of 1970 or excuse me the 10th week of 1970 so very early it'd be like February in terms of when the pots were put in however Many of the features on the guitar would uh, really be more characteristic of what we'd identify with 1969 examples, hence the 1969. In other words, the guitar the, probably began production late 1969, didn't finish till 70, so it's got features of both, so it's a transitional instrument. What are the transitional features? Well, uh, we got a three-piece body and three-piece neck, so that's characteristic of late 69 into 70, so that could be both. But if you look at the headstock, you'll notice that the uh, logo there is with the open O, and uh, that's more characteristic of 69. Uh, it switches to where that O is connected, the logo changes. Also, if you look on the back, there's no volute on the back of the neck. So uh, with the no volute neck uh, and the uh, logo and whatnot, that's 1969 features. Um, however, when you get to the, the pots, that's where the 1970 factor comes in. Uh, so it's a transitional example. It bridges the year. So it's got some desirable features. Uh, other cool things about the guitar, the plastics are all original. Um, the tailpiece, the posts, uh, all this stuff is original. Um, I'm not sure about this switch tip because I think by this point they're supposed to be white. This one does look old, but it's kind of amber. Um, pots are original. They got sprayed caps on there. And the solder doesn't look to have been messed with to my eye. I got pictures of it on there for you to look. Uh, plastics are right. Tuners have been changed. Uh, so those are Schaller's now. Very common. This bridge is a later ABR1 style replacement. Then perhaps the most significant change is the finish on the back of the neck. It looks like it's been taken off and then sprayed again. Um, you can kind of see where that is up here on the headstock. And then it kind of creeps down right here. To the edge but then it smooths out here so under a black light it'll light here and light here but all here it's pretty smooth so i think the finish was removed and then it was resprayed uh, you can see the serial number on there it does look a little deeper than you normally see so take note of that um, but the serial number is right uh, numbers for the year um, yeah all in all that knocks it down from like the super collector grade otherwise it's pretty clean uh, you know, 70s era ABR1 is easy enough to find. Um, no cracks or breaks or repairs on the neck or on the body. Um, just the finish removal. Some buckle rash on the back. And uh, yeah, great sounding guitar. Now note about the mini humbuckers. Uh, a lot of people think, ah, mini, they don't pack a punch. No, they pack plenty of punch. It's not that they don't lack for output. They're just smaller and therefore uh, capture a, a smaller range of the the strings vibrations and have a little different sound to them. Sorry.
So there you go. That's a quick rundown of this uh, transitional 1969-1970 Gibson Les Paul Deluxe. If you have any more questions, please contact me. Uh, if you're just watching the video, leave a comment below. Uh, and check out all the details in the listing because that will give you my analysis. Again, any questions about it, please ask. Happy to answer and uh, get any clarity that you may need.